Uh, hey everyone, Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am here with the group behind Mope. Um, uh, congratulations on getting into Sundance. Let me start Thank with you. that. Thank you. Um, I'm sure when you were making it, you're like, we're going to Sundance for sure. Absolutely. It's, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we all thought yeah. that. No, no, we, we were, uh, obviously. We, it was obviously our goal, but we were, we're so happy. I mean, it's, uh, we, try, we just try to make the best movie possible, and we hope we got in. I, I listen. The, the fact is, almost everyone watching this thing will have not have seen the film yet. So, yeah. uh, talk a little bit about what the film is about, okay. and especially what does the term mope mean? Okay, so mope a mope is a low level porn performer, someone who does the dirtiest, nastiest work in porn, like bukkakes, gangbangs, really unusual stuff. That ball kicking, most, yeah, ball armpit kicking, armpit sniffing, armpit sniffing, smelling feet, unusual <laughs> stuff. That's you know, that's not that. It's tough to get performers to do. So basically, mopes are these guys that dream of being big stars. So the movie is set in, it's a true story set in 2010 about two low-level mopes, Steve Driver, Tom Dong, <laughs> as they're struggling to make it in the porn industry, and they kind of spiral, spiral down a path of destruction. So it's funny, it's sad, but it's, uh, it's a crazy true story. I, I definitely have to ask you, yeah. uh, what was it, when did you, when you first heard the story, mm. were you like, this is a movie? You know, I, I was vaguely familiar of it when it happened in 2010, and then years later, I came across a couple articles about it, and then immediately I knew, because I was looking for a first project to do for a first uh, film, and I just responded to the story. It has everything I'm looking for in a project. Oh, I was going to say, it has everything. Porn. Literally. But yeah, no, yeah, no, it has, yeah. Literally, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's just Comedy, such a, violence. Comedy, violence, uh, but, it's, but it's like, it's, a, it's kind of a... A tonal shift between humor and drama, and ultimately it's a tragedy. But I, it just I found it captivating. Well, when you're dealing with something yeah. with this subject matter, yeah. um, obviously you can't go like uh, NC-17, Correct. or maybe you can. Yeah. But talk a little bit about the 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 line in terms yeah. of what you wanted to show and how important is showing that stuff versus just sort of talking yeah. about it. Well, no, you know, nothing like nudity. There's plenty of nudity in the film, but it's always to create a sense of realism. If you actually go on a porn set, which I we, I have and many of the actors here have. People walking around naked, there's all the guys, regardless if they're talking about sports or the weather, they're kind of fondling them themselves, mm -hmm. preparing themselves for the scene. So once you absorb all these details, you realize you're gonna have to get a little graphic to accurately depict it. And our big thing was making sure that people in the porn industry would watch this film and be like, oh, that's spot on. That's one of my, you know, I want it to be feel very real. One of the things that yeah. you had said that we talked about was yeah. that like when the nudity came up, it wasn't intended to be Tittle. titillating yeah. or, or, or sexy. It was, it was a very vulnerable, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of raw uh, yeah. thing. It was, it was that. It was getting across the the, yeah. the risk and the, and, the, and the vulnerability people were putting out there um, by just, here I am. Sure. Yeah. I'm curious, for, for all the actors, actually, you, talk a little bit about when you get the script for something like this. Um, is it something, are you a little bit nervous about, you know, do you know what I mean? And talk a little bit about what it was like on set. Because, again, I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know how much you have to show, and yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Are you rocking two mics? You should, you should go with the two mics. Like what you do in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little, little preview. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was definitely, um, yeah, I had a lot of trepidation when I first read the script uh, as to whether I wanted to do it because of the world that it, it depicts, um, and whether I was able to do it because of the journey that, um, that Steve and Tom go on. It's, it's a hugely emotional roller coaster. Um, I think on set, I mean, you were really good about not doing things that we weren't comfortable with, and so apparently I'm comfortable with everything. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think there was, it, for me, that, and then going back to the nudity, for me, it, it really couldn't be about that. It really had to be about the story. It really had to be about the relationship. And there are moments of bathos, and that's great, but it really kind of cuts through in an emotional sense. And I really was concentrating on that because you're in this world that is to me who's not in the porn world quite absurd at times and you have to kind of ground that and I think from script level um, to actually shooting it I think you and everyone actually was really involved with doing that yeah yeah when I, when I first read it I was I knew it was a script I wanted to do like I, I definitely had to do this but it was definitely some hesitation uh, I was very nervous about some scenes um, and even though the script was great there's Talking to Lucas is on a different level because he makes you feel so safe, whether on set or before we went, we, we start shooting. He's a master manipulator. Like, that, honestly. That might be it because, <laughs> because at, before we started shooting, I pretty much gave my life to Lucas. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I trust you 100% completely. 
whatever it is. I wasn't. You, you <laughs> I was. It took you a while. Still I mean, a little iffy. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think because I was when we were doing, yeah. obviously I was like, oh God, Lucas is in the edit. And I just thought the sound, <laughs> I just can imagine me just being, Lucas. I yeah, it was yeah, honestly, so. I'm very, very nervous. But yeah, ultimate trust. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he would, he would like come like check on everyone in, in between takes. Yeah. You know, he'd yeah. like, yeah. everybody okay? Everyone yeah. cool? Yeah. Like, you know, if people had to like leave the room, collect themselves. It was a very trusting set, a lot of respect, which let us really go there when the cameras were rolling. Yeah. Yeah. But in, you did in, in um, thank, you, thank you guys. Um, <laughs> sorry, there's, um, in a confident way, um, he, you knew the story you wanted to tell. That's why I, when I read it, um, as, 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 <laughs> As an actor, um, I guess I read so, when I read a script, um, it, the empathy and the human story of of these of everyone in it. Um, it it was it was there. It didn't I it didn't matter that it was the porn industry because he wrote he didn't write the script about the porn industry. He wrote it about the the human side of these two guys following their dream and what went down around them. And it was um, it it got me really excited. And then of course you know after talking to this guy um it i was pretty i was sold uh they never told me it was set in the porn world <laughs> so i showed up and i was really uh, surprised uh, very excited yeah so i just <laughs> so i jumped right Diddling. in and i was like what do you want me to do oh we're not shooting a porn okay i misinterpreted that sorry no i honestly like i i remember saying to my agent I was like i really like this and i like i like dark stuff i like i like i like you know, tr troubling stories because you know it's it, everyone has tr troubling experience and stuff. But I was nervous about doing something that I might have to sort of explain to my daughter what I was working on or you know whatever. So I, I talked to her mother about it, and she's like, "I think it's it's okay. You know, you don't have to sort of give her all the details. But if you want to tell her, it's about you know someone who has troubles and you, it's a dark story. That's okay. But it's interesting, just even as us actors, been like, uh, I'm I'm." I'm interested in this world, but I'm also a little, as the audience will be, it's like, I don't know this world. This is a weird world that we're kind of going into. Um, yeah, it's sort of a, the experience is, you know, I think we all had it. As we, and then, then when to get into it, it's like, oh, we're just dealing with people, you know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any apprehension? Yeah, when I read my, my part, I was like, oh, <laughs> like <laughs> my character says some really horrible things. So that was a little... Like, you know, took a lot of uh, decision making to like, do I want to do that? But um, but it served a purpose and and uh, and it, you know, helped the story al along. I mean, it was really the script is a beautiful story about this friendship and this need for love, you know, even if it's mistaken and all convoluted. Uh, I'm always curious about the editing process. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about uh, what you learned in the edit and maybe any changes that were made as a result of any early screenings. Um, yeah, I had a great editor, uh, Kern Saxton, who you know was, was amazing, and I I let you know I gave him a lot of free reign. I would shoot. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, he's, he's waiting right now. <laughs> no, he was great. Um, you know. Most of the edit editing was cutting. Like the script was 100 pages long, but for some reason the first cut was two hours and 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, you know, I kind of learned about like what you don't need. Like I think in, you know, moving forward on projects, I'd probably shoot shorter scripts. And it's, it's interesting what you can convey in just a look instead of like an ex, a scene with a bunch of exposition. You know, it's, uh, it's really just about, I think, getting to the core of what you're trying to say in the film. And any scene that isn't about that is just, you're gonna, it's gonna go in the edit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, for each of you, and I, this is a delicate one because I don't want to spoil anything in the movie, but I also want to talk about this. Yeah. So you read the script, you know that there's some interesting material in this thing. Is Was there a day, or when you're reading the script, uh, can you talk about a scene that maybe you were really nervous before shooting began? You're like, oh, this is going to be a really hard day on set. Yeah, can I? Yeah. I mean, I, and it might be, Tanya will probably have the same answer. I mean, it's like the scene uh, with Tampa where it's like a group uh, – it's a gangbang and, and it's it gets very intense and it gets very it just is a, it is a scene about the the sort of dark darker side of this world and 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 the darker side of just investigating that that part of you know sexuality or you know any of that stuff and yeah it was it was nerve-wracking but at the same time Lucas made us all feel very safe it was paced well we you know we 
we would do it and sort of check in with each other and and uh i mean tiny yeah, killed it. Um, she killed that scene so um, great thank you um uh it was uh, when i read the script i knew that that would probably one of I'm, i'll never do a scene like that again it's not written and i've never read a scene like that um uh but um, Tamba's story is real and true. She didn't. She wasn't part of the porn world. She got kind of swept into it and didn't even know she was there until it was too late. And it's it's pretty, it's pretty heartbreaking. I think I think there is that side of the porn world where um, people that are on the street and do in are doing drugs and are desperate and they they get into it that way and not because they're dreaming to be porn stars. And she, I mean, my character never got into it. But that day on set was um, I knew it was obviously going to be that way when I first talked to Lucas and I don't think any of us could have done that scene without the way it was shot and the way uh, he set it up in all, almost in a chore choreographed way it allowed us to when you're put in a box kind of it allowed us to feel it's safe mm -hmm. and go there and be like we we know we know what's not going to get crossed what lines aren't going to get crossed, and then it allowed us to be creative within it. So he, it was him. Yeah, yeah. I, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> How many mics do you want? Um, yeah, that that was a hard day. Um, I actually there. Um, obviously, Stephen and Tom, you know, they lived, and there there was a scene with Steve's dad, and I think I was really nervous about that because Steve's dad is still alive, and so it was about depicting his son on on screen. And that, that was a very nerve-wracking of that that relationship, and and Lucas introduced me to his father, and it that was that I really felt such a, a level of responsibility at that point. I think there were several hard days, including that day, but there was such a level of responsibility to this man, who I knew would be watching this this movie and and thinking of his son, and, and me not being his son, but really trying to kind of embody that relationship. Was um I was nervous. Sure. Yeah, there's a, there was a scene where... I had a scene with Brian that I thought was probably one of the hardest scenes for me. Um, it was just a very emotional scene, and, and I, before we even started shooting, I told Lucas, I, I, I don't know if I can do this scene, but uh, he didn't have any worries, and, and um, on the day, he gave me liberty to, to um, do whatever it is I needed to do to get into that space, and he made him very safe, and, and um, hopefully it turned out all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that that was a very, very grueling day, in addition to all the other scenes that you guys have spoken about, because uh, there are very humorous moments in this movie, but it gets pretty dark as well, so there are plenty of days that a lot of us were... It was hard. Yeah, it was, it was very hard. There's some funny bits, too. With that darkness though like with my character who is a very real guy who I still talk to and Lucas introduced me to him on a porn set but we still talk up to you know last week um, I didn't have a lot of sexual stuff to do but there's a very dark violent thing that happens you know at the end um, and I actually that, that was like I felt a big responsibility to get it right and not not be melodramatic not uh, back off from it because he's still dealing with these very real effects of what happened that day and he's going to be watching and so I think that was the thing was a responsibility to all these real people that existed and do exist um, in this world but that again was a, a credit to Lucas's directing in the script was that this is all real and so if we don't do it the way it happened and we don't depict them with the respect of what actually happened you're actually not respecting the incidents uh, <laughs> the, uh, the the traumatic things that went down. And so, that, again, that gave us the permission and the safety to really just dive into it. Sure. Yeah. I, I, well, you actually didn't share. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Is there anything you were really nervous about before filming? Not re not really. I mean, I sort of talked about it earlier. My, my character is sort of an oblivious racist. Like, he just doesn't get it. Like it. <laughs> He's not aware of himself. And uh, so, but I wasn't really scared. I mean, when I saw it, that scene with Tampa is just so mm -hmm. heart crushing. That's really difficult to watch. Mm -hmm. I'm basically out of time, but I just want to ask you real fast. Yeah. Um, and so if you don't mind, a, a quick answer. Yeah, of course. The thing about this is that when, this is based on a true story, real people, but you're also making a movie. So you yeah. have to tow that line of balancing fact and fiction. Can you sort of talk about towing that line and what you felt you could take liberties with, if anything? I've, you can take liberties with a lot of stuff, I think. I think as long as the, 
the the film is true to the essence of what like the characters are the, to the essence of what they are you're going to have to collapse stuff you're going to have to compress time and change things but as long as you get the like the essence of what the story is about it's i think it's good like i wouldn't change anything drastic that altered the dynamic of the entire story but of course you know i never you know i never met these guys so the, uh, a certain element is going to be you know Zach Newkirk, Newkirk and i who wrote the script we we had to make up a lot of stuff but but because i met everybody like I knew how these people talked, and so I could I could basically fill in the blank as much as possible. Uh, just to jump in, sorry, um, because I haven't we haven't addressed this. Like, I yeah. think you took a risk with me because Steve is actually biracial and mm -hmm. I'm not. So I think that was and thank you for okay. asking me. But like I think and we're also all brainwashed. Thank you, yes. Lucas. Because <laughs> it was all Lucas. But yeah, I, I think it's a testament to to Look. kind of. Um, you know, creative license with me. You go with the best actors. You go with. You have to make choices like that. You. My answer is always go with the best actor who's going to be able to create this character in the best way. And it may be a slight different thing, but if it's the, they're the best, then go with them. Totally. Yeah. Um, I got to stop there and just say thank you so much for coming in the studio. Thank you. Cannot wait to see the film here at Sundance. And thank you. And I hope it's thank a huge you. hit for you guys. Thank, thank you very, very much. much.